My pleasure to welcome in the Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations, Ed Stefanski. Ed, thank you for joining us here on Raptors at the Half. Oh, love it, Matt. Let's talk about Jonas Valanciunas because you've had the opportunity to go to Lithuania to watch this young man play. When you watched him, what did you take away from, you know, a legit center, fifth overall selection uh, last season for the Toronto Raptors? Well, I was fortunate to see him twice this summer in the under-19 uh, World Championships and then the European Championships where he played against men uh, over there. Uh, what I love about it, he has a great motor. And a lot of big kids, seven foot or not, don't have the motor that you would like him. He has that already. He's got all the intangibles. We, uh, Brian Colangelo and I met with him twice while we were over there, had long meetings with him. He wants to be good. He's going to work hard at his craft. He's a very intelligent young man. All those things will add, not only can he catch, he's got great hands, he's explosive on his first jump. Uh, he's got to get his perimeter game a little bit better. Uh, he blocks shots, rolls to the basket, all the things you're looking for. But when you can put together of what kind of human being and what kind of person he is, you got to get excited about him. Now, I don't want to put too much pressure in anointing him the next coming uh, Olajuwon here, but he's got a good chance to be a very good basketball player and definitely help the Toronto Raptors. Now, Alex McKechnie was just sent over the director of sports science, spent some time there uh, with Jonas Valanciunas just to make sure that everything uh, is headed yeah. in the right direction, that he's on the right uh, programs there. What were his thoughts you know, coming away from the weekend that he spent there? Well, Alex and I text a lot, uh, and I said to, said to him, I already knew what I thought about the kid. I said, <laughs> yeah. what do you think about the kid as a person? He said, wow, love him. What, and the kid wants it. He asked the right questions. He's like a sponge, which is I, I knew that's what he would be. And so what we now have, Alex going over there, getting a baseline of where he is physically, what he has to do. And we're not going over there. They have a good uh, strength coach from Serbia who knows what he's doing. Alex would go over there just to see where the kid was at and to give him a few exercises that would help his growth. But he was very happy with the strength and conditioning coach already there. So we'll just add to it. But this is a process. His English, uh, he's taken English lessons. I thought he was pretty good anyway. Uh, and it reminds me a lot because we drafted uh, Nene Kristic yes. from Serbia when I was in New Jersey. And the same thing. We left him over there for two years. His body grew just naturally. And we put a conditioning type of person with him, uh, got him English lessons and all that. This kid is uh, better upside potential than Nena Kristic, which would be great because Kristic is a good basketball player. This kid has bigger upside. And certainly, I think when you look to the future, Raptors would expect him to be a part of next season. Yeah, uh, all indication he is coming uh, next year. He has what Brian is saying, uh, NBA-itis. He wears the NBA socks during the games. Uh, we brought him over a ton of gear. He loves it. Uh, he, he watches whatever NBA games you have. I didn't realize, I knew Lithuania loved basketball, oh, but it's a religion time. over yes, there. Indeed. Just like hockey is a religion here in yeah. Canada, basketball hoops and I was asking where are the hockey rinks hockey's not even in there it's all hoops that's all they want to talk about and this kid wants to come well they've had some great ones you know you go back Sharunas Marcelonis Arvidas Sabonis right. and the list keeps going on and on um, now when you look at what your time is right now I know you are on the road a lot you're watching college basketball uh, you're taking a look at the future when you sit around the table with Brian Colangelo and you project out certainly this is going to be and I know you can't specifically mention names because you don't know who's in the draft who's not but a lot of people believe this could be one of the deepest drafts uh, in a long time in the NBA is it a draft that you believe you're going to be able to acquire somebody in that lottery area that can step right in and be a starter uh, be a significant piece or do you think that even with it being what it is that depending upon who it is you're going to need time yeah i think anytime you draft a kid in the first round whatever pick it is the guy's going to need time to adapt to this more physical how the referees call the game the pace of the game what i've seen over rookies over the years i've been in the nba it's the pace of the game it's too fast for them and until they adapt to that speed 
uh, then they become players. But uh, with Valanciunas coming over, I think he'll be ready to go right away because he's been playing professional basketball here. The speed's going to get to him a little bit, but he's a very intelligent guy. I think where we'll be drafted, we're going to get a nice, nice player. Uh, we don't know with the lottery and where our, how many balls we have in there to get the – but there's some real – very, very talented kids at the top of this draft. It's a deep draft. It's a solid draft. But at the top, if you're fortunate, uh, some ways if you're fortunate in drafting, you don't want your record to be there, right. uh, you'll get a very nice player that can add to this puzzle uh, and to get us better going forward. How difficult is it going through this? Because I know from a coaching perspective and speaking to Dwayne Casey, you know, coaches want to win. But then Coach Casey understands the big picture. Executives, you want to win. But then you also look at the long-term health of an organization and it speaks to Brian this past season taking uh, in the draft, Jonas Valanciunas, knowing yeah. you know, he's somebody that you look at in the future. Um, how difficult is it, though, to sit here and go through this process where you know uh, you're, you're not going to necessarily come out on the winning side night in and night out, that you have to maintain this focus of what's best for the organization and quite possibly keeping Brian Clancelo off of his cell phone, you know, come trade deadline because, you know, the competitive instincts of you and Brian Colangelo and Coach Casey are such that you want to have it happen now. You never want to lose. And Coach Casey is going out every night trying to win basketball games, and that's the way it should be. Uh, I called Brian the night he took Valanciunas after he picked him, and I credited Brian. I, I'm a big Valanciunas guy, but more importantly, Brian and the Toronto Raptors have been under a lot of heat to win basketball games, and they knew Valanciunas would have to stay over a year or maybe two. But the kid it was the right selection for the Toronto Raptors, and I thought Brian did a great job not worrying just about short-term but worrying about the long-term picture. And so, to me, he picked the right guy where I'm sure the people in Toronto wanted more of a name of a, a Kemba Walker or someone they knew in college basketball. So I, I commend him for that. But it's very difficult uh, when you lose a lot of games. But we, as, as uh, personnel people, are always looking ahead. I'm, I'm two, three years ahead of what it is right now. And, we, we, you know, the draft will be one way we can get it done. Trade deadline. You know, Brian will make, you know, we'll make a trade if the right piece is for the future. You're right. If there's, it's a piece just to help for short term, uh, there'll be a big argument on that. But I don't think that'll happen. And in, in, in a free agency, Brian's done a good job putting us in a spot where we're going to have some free agent money this summer uh, that we can use. So with the draft, free agency, and possible trades, and in basketball, it only takes one or two guys to propel you forward and that's what I, that's what's going to happen here in Toronto when you look at uh, the way the NBA is now you know certainly you can see Miami you can see what's happened in New York although it's be <laughs> with Jeremy Lin that all of a sudden it, it appears as though it, it's coming together you can see the Clippers with those two talents and Chicago, even they had a ton of free agent money, but yet Carlos Boozer wasn't one, two, or three on the list. He was quite possibly right. fourth or fifth on that list. But there appears to be, whether it be Denver, what's happening there, or quite possibly the vision here, that they understand that it's a collection of really good and great players coming together, not necessarily the LeBron James, the Dwayne Wade's, or the Chris Bosch's all coming together, but yet is it almost a little bit like what happened with Detroit a few years ago of this collection, you think? Because Philadelphia, right. which you helped build, obviously, I think has some of those elements as well. You see it in Denver, and you're starting to see it now, I think, in more markets. Well, when I was in Philadelphia, that was the way we had to do it. We weren't going to get the stars to come to Philadelphia and play, but collectively through the draft, and through some trades, I think, you know, where Philadelphia is right now, average age of like 24, 25, they have a nice collection, but they still need a couple players. I think we'll see the same thing here with the draft picks we're going to get with Valanciunas coming over with a good draft pick this year. Uh, we got DeMar DeRozan here, who should be a good basketball player going forward. Bargnani has adapted to Dwayne Casey. I give him a lot of credit. So Bargnani is a, a star in the making. You know, maybe it took him a little bit of time, but when he was healthy this year, he was an all-star. So they're the type of ingredients you have. And, yeah, you can make it a wider range in just getting that star player. But what happens is when you get these younger draft picks that are good players, then a star will say, hey, 
I go there to Toronto, I can maybe put them over the top. And that's that's what I think will happen. It won't happen next year, but in a couple of years when the younger kids get better, a star player is going to say, hey, Toronto's a great city. It's a world-class city. Let me go play for a good basketball team. Ed, it's always a pleasure Thank talking you, basketball with you. I love talking hoops. <laughs> you do, and, and, and we love talking it together. There's no question. Ed Stefanski, executive Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Toronto Raptors joining us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.